In this series of videos, we are going to recreate this image here. What we see is a lovely portrait taken on a beautiful beach at sunset with this lovely strong light hitting our figure. Or is it? In fact, if I come to the Layers panel and hold down my Option button while clicking on the eyeball for the original layer, you can see that this was, in fact, a very lovely portrait taken on what looks like a very cool day with somewhat indirect lighting. What we're going to do in this video is take this and make it into this. Now, but before we do that, let me first make this disclaimer that, of course, this sort of enhancement creates a false ideal of beauty that can be harmful. This image is what we might call photoshopped. But there are some interesting principles and techniques that go into making an image like this that are very worth our time. Let's begin by opening up the portrait.jpg file that you've already hopefully downloaded. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is a lovely photo as is. You can see that the photographer has focused very strongly on the details of the face with a very shallow depth of field. Her eyes are in perfect focus. But you can see that by the time we get around to the temples and the ears, we are already starting to get a fair bit of blur. As that distance increases to the background, we have that lovely depth of field effect called bokeh lighting, where all the light details become circular. I'm going to zoom back out. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my layers panel. I've changed the name of this layer to original image. But I also want to do one more thing. I want to convert this layer to a smart layer by holding down the control button or right clicking on the blue layer indicator and choosing from the pop-up menu, convert to smart object. This will allow us to apply smart filters as we proceed. I'm going to duplicate this original image a couple of times. I'm going to do this by holding down my option button while clicking on this layer and dragging up until I see this double-headed arrow and then releasing a new layer above the original one. I'm going to do this one more time so that I have three layers. I'm going to rename these. The middle layer, I'm going to call that one Smart Blur. And the one above that, I'm going to double click that and call that High Pass Filter. These two layers are going to work in conjunction to do two things. The Smart Blur layer is going to hide some of the detail that I want to hide. Particularly, it's going to hide some of the detail in the skin. The High Pass Filter layer is going to do the opposite. It's going to bring out the detail in the areas that I want to highlight. And this is how we're going to do it. First, I'm going to turn off my High Pass Filter layer. We'll do that one in just a moment. With my Smart Blur layer selected, I'm going to come to the Filter drop-down menu and select Blur, Smart Blur. In the Smart Blur pop-up window, I'm going to reposition my image so that I can see the eye and the skin at the same time. I'm not going to play with these too much from their default values. You'll notice, though, that if I bring the threshold up, I can make the image very, very soft indeed. This does good things for the skin, but it also softens some of the detail in the eye. I'm going to fix that in just a moment. I'm going to say OK. If you want to see what that effect does, let's turn off the visibility of this layer so we can see the original image. And so you can see, yes, in fact, it does do a great deal of softening in the skin. But there are a couple of areas here where I don't want that softening. You can see the eyes are starting to look a little bit too soft. The detail of the nose ring and the nostrils and the mouth even are starting to become a little bit too soft. What I'm going to do with this Smart Blur layer still selected, I'm going to come to the bottom of this Layers panel and I'm going to click once on the Add mask icon. Now currently this mask layer is white and we know from the mantra white reveals black conceals that white is currently just showing everything on this layer. But I'm going to use black to paint into the mask to reveal the more detailed layer below. To do that I'm going to come over to my toolbox and, and I'm going to choose my brush tool and the brush that I want to work with is a soft round brush. I'm going to come up here to the brush control panel. I'm going to click on that icon here and Currently, I do have a soft round brush selected. It's usually the first one in the panel. And I'm going to make my brush roughly about 100 pixels in size, roughly the size of the eye. And I'm just going to press my return button to accept those values. And you can see that Photoshop knows that I have my mask and a brush selected and has automatically chosen black as my foreground color. However, if you don't have black as your foreground color, you can click on it and choose black like so. And I'm going to use this brush and I'm just going to go over the eyes like so, just revealing some of the details of the eyelashes and the irises. 
I'm going to go over the eyebrows like this to bring out the detail of those eyebrows that have been softened a little bit too much. I'm also going to go over the nose ring and some of the details of the nostrils. Move that up and I'm going to reveal the division between the upper and lower lip. That is all that I want to do. If you want to see what that looks like, turn on the visibility of that layer. It has done some nice stuff though to enhance some of the softening of the skin. Of course, this is a smart filter. So that means that we could always come back here and change this. I could come back and double click smart blur. I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm going to come back to my layers panel and I'm going to turn on the visibility of my high pass filter layer. And again, that's just a duplicate of the original layer. So that's what we're seeing right now. But with that layer selected, I'm going to come to the filter drop down menu to where it says other. And from this pop out menu, I'm going to choose this filter high pass. Now, high pass is an interesting effect. It doesn't look like much here. In fact, it looks quite ghostly, but you can see how this radius slider changes the detail in the contrasty areas. By dragging up the radius, we are increasing the amount of detail in the high contrast areas of our image, while leaving the low contrast areas untouched. This is an interesting effect. However, you can see that we can quickly overdo it to the point where we end up creating some unfortunate halos. There's a sweet spot that I find right around 10. I'm going to say OK. Now we have to make a change to the blend mode to really see this effect by coming to the blend mode drop down menu with this layer selected. I'm going to come either to overlay or soft light. There is a subtle difference in how these different blend modes handle detail. I actually like to work with soft light. OK, we've now successfully enhanced the details that we want to see while softening some of those other details. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so I can see this a bit better. We could leave this as is, but I want to show you some other things that we can do with this image. I'm going to come to the bottom of my layers panel. I'm going to click on my adjustment layers icon and reveal this menu. And I'm going to choose photo filter. Now, I'm just going to bring that over and bring up my properties panel so I can see both at the same time. The photo filter adjustment layer, as you can see here, has a number of presets that allow us to choose actual photo filters that photographers would use. You can see that I can choose the amount of effect by using this density slider. This is an interesting way of working, although sometimes you can get some rather unexpected results. Let me show you a different way that I like to add photo filters. I'm going to turn off this photo filter adjustment layer. I'm going to again add a new adjustment layer by coming to the adjustment layer icon. And this time I'm going to come here to what's called color lookup. And again, that opens up a different property panel. This is called a lookup table, an LUT. is something that is used quite often in film editing. It allows you to add what's called color grading to an entire movie. But we can also apply it to our photography like this. In this drop down here, I'm going to look at some of these options. I actually find that these give a much more interesting effect than the regular photo filters. Some are quite strong, of course. I'm not going to use a color adjustment layer at the moment, but I'm not going to get rid of it though either. I'm just going to turn that off. I may in fact add this again later. So far, we've only changed things that are currently visible. But in our next video, we are going to enhance this image by adding some direct lighting.